I've been thinking for a long time about this interaction with between people and police. Uh, in the UK, it's pretty much the same as everywhere else, really, it, as in America, New Zealand, Australia, Europe. It's always a case of the people having to prove their innocence. And when you think about this, the onus is on the person against the police to prove their innocence. Now, we know that it's supposed to be you're innocent until proven guilty. Now, we all know that doesn't really work that way. You're guilty until you prove your innocence. Guilty people don't ever worry about going to court. Don't ever worry about what's going to happen to them because they've already proved themselves guilty. So they get trapped better than the people who are actually innocent and have to prove their innocence in any interaction. So today, a switch happened. A, a light bulb went off. And what could you say happened? Well, uh, uh, tired as usual. Flip the script. I've constantly been asking why are police corrupt? Why is the justice system falling apart? Why is it that you only get one judge out of maybe 100 that does the right thing? Why is it that you never get a policeman to say, yes, they've reported another policeman for beating somebody up or for tasing somebody or pepper spraying them or stalking them or harassing them? To be an example is you, um, Joe Public UK. Talk about stalking and talk about harassment. The same as the guy down in Kent. You know, David Heath. How many more people in this country are going to be put to the wall and be ignored and dismissed with, he's just a person, he's just a, he's just a person. We're a gang. We don't have to do what he wants us to do or she wants us to do. We're a gang. Got that. Look, it says on there, I don't know whether it comes out. Politics is exactly like this. See? There's the wolf with the sheep. Yeah, see it? And then there's everybody else going, yeah, yeah, no problem, yeah. So, so what, what is this switch that went off today? I, I suddenly thought, hang on. I've been worried so much about proving innocence for myself and other people. So why not? Let's put the owners back on the police and the justice system. Let's Let's find out whether they are following the oath that they took. You know, for the police, is to act with impartiality, to, to follow the laws, to uphold the laws that government make, and to follow their oath. They also say in that oath, basic human rights. What's the first thing that goes out the window? Basic human rights. What's the second thing that goes out the window? The oath. Impartiality. So, as far as I'm concerned now, police have to prove to me they are good. In any interaction I have with police now, they have to immediately prove to me that they are a good cop, not a bad cop. They have to prove to me that they are following that oath that they took, which they are bound by, which is a legal contract between them, the Queen and the government, that they are not bullies, that they're not going to attack me, they're not going to tears me for nothing so they have to prove their innocence to me and you they have to prove to me and you that they have compassion in their job saying it's just my job is not good enough anymore when you are serving people i'm not going to go on about the crown and stuff like that i'm not i'm just not going to go there what i'm saying is these people in everyday interactions they have to prove that they are following the oath that they took. And I'm not saying this as a, uh, as a sovereign citizen to be an oath taker and stuff like that. It's their oath that they take that they have to abide by basic human rights. So which are the human rights that are always broken by the police? Instantly. But that's another post. Let whoever you have an interaction with in the police 
around the country, let them prove their innocence. Not paranoia. Let them prove their innocence. Let them prove their compassion. Let them prove their care. Let them prove their duty of care. Hmm? Now, we often hear that the police are the one of the emergency services. No, that's ambulance people. That's fire brigade in the NHS. The police are just law. That's it. And they go on about this this sin, this situation with police. You know, there's more. That's why they have the big blue lion flag. That blue lion flag is just a bastardization of the British flag. Any serving soldier, any member of any family that soldiers are being killed, whether it's female or male, they have never bastardised the flag. But this blue line gang, gang thuggery in the United Kingdom have, and they are proud of it. It is not for in in, you know, in respect of officers who've died. Like I've said many times before, Flood Dog once said, you know, about there's 100, it's, you're 173 times more likely to be killed than a terrorist than a policeman. Why is that? When, when you want help, who do you ask for? Do you ever ask your neighbour? Because this is how far communities got bad. It's, it's become null and void. We used to rely on each other. Now we rely on the police. The police said, don't come round when you're being burgled. They don't do anything. Really, when you think about it. I was watching something on telly the other day. RSPCA. I have my doubts about them, but I also have the good points as well. A woman was diving into a river... A river to, to to save these sheep. Why did she do that? Why did the RSPCA have 145 serious threats to life while they were trying to save wild wild stock, you know, animals, goats, sheep, horses? That's what I call courageous. That's courage to me. And then they, you know, out of how many police police do you get? Uh, you know that they 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 prove beyond a, sh a shred of a doubt that they've got that instinct. Not many, not many. How many will say yes? I have notified my superiors about the misconduct of a an officer that I work with. You'll get whistleblowers. You know, look at the um, Hillsborough disaster. Look at the grooming. Clans within the police. Look at the predators within police. They are not a force of upholding laws. They are a force of predators. They come out to predate on the people. They automatically think that you're a thug, that you're a dirty, unwashed, unclean person. You know why they think that? Choice. They choose to think that. They choose to be like that with everybody they meet, practically. That's no way to live. It does your head in. It does your soul in. But these police, nowadays... Let them prove to you that they are following their oath. The next thing I, the next time, you know, I'm telling them now, basically, because they watch our channels. The next time a policeman comes up to me, the first words I'm going to say is, are you following your oath? And that is, I'm not saying anymore. Because the first thing I'm going to do is put them on the spot legally. Are you following your oath? Because everything after saying that can be proven. The same as your telephone, the same as your camera. It's your evidence. Don't let them switch it off. And if they take it off you, tell them, that's your evidence. Don't switch it off. That is my evidence for against you. And if they switch it off, then they are tampering with your evidence. It's no big legal issue. You know, it's no, it's no silly thing. Why do they switch it off? Because they don't want to record what they're now going to do to you. Well, with me, they didn't realise. They just got all of it and shut it in the front seat of the car. I was slammed up against the truck. And one of them ripped my arm out. The arm socket came out and bashed back in. That's what they did to me. But they didn't realise that the phone was still recording. It's on It's on here. Look at it. Say to the police, are you acting on your oath today? And if they don't want to say anything else, let them go. It's okay, no problem. If they don't, uh, don't give me any of that shit. Ah, they took an oath. You've just told them they did and you've reminded them on. Civil rights, human rights. They, these are the things that are your protection. So the next time anybody comes to you, whether it's a, a police or justice or a council employee worker, ask them to prove their innocence before having anything more to do with you. 
ask them to prove that they are caring for you. Not, you know, dogmatic about the, the, the phone recorder or anything. Is their duty of care to come out of their business or, or work to come onto a public's footpath and ask what you're doing? No, they have no right to do that. It's hook, line and sink and black and white. They have no right to come up to you, even police, and ask what you're doing. They have no right. It's got nothing to do with suspicion. It's got nothing to do with, um, you know, well, we, we just wanted to know what you were doing. They they know what you're doing. You've got a fucking camera in your hand. you got a camera. You know, It's there. Go away. I want nothing to do with you. Zip. Second thing. Every time you talk, I've learned this. Every time you talk, it turns into an interrogation. Think about that. It turns into an interrogation. You're going to do what you're going to do. I'm going to do what I do when I go out. But the thing is, look at what you've got as weapons, as shields. You've got the oath that they took to be impartial, to follow the laws and hold them correctly within the law, and to say and do and think they have basic human rights that they've got to abide by. And that is your weapons. This normally isn't. But mind you, sometimes you're having fun, so go for it. <laughs> they come out with amazing things that they just dig a hole for and they keep digging. But never underestimate, police are not thick. Some of them are, but not all of them. So the, some of them, most of them are incredibly predatory. That's what you've got to remember. What do predators do? They predate on those that they can. And they are like the apex predator in people and in, in social circles. The police are the apex predator. Think about it. It's more obvious when you just sit in the cold light of day and you think about it. And then the, the little switches come on. And Jack, thank you very much, matey. <laughs> you give me so many things to think about. It's incredible. Anyway, bye-bye now.